River Basin covers a transboundary area of about 13,500 kilometers across Kenya and Tanzania. The Mara River runs 395 kilometers from its source in Mao Forest to the point where it drains into Lake Victoria. It runs through the Masai Mara Game Reserve and Serengeti National Park in Tanzania. The two areas are of global conservation significance and great economic importance to the local communities. Agriculture forms the backbone of the communities here, with several planting seasons to obtain both subsistence and cash crops. Joseph is a resident of Bamet district, an area on the outskirts of the Mara Basin. Like many, he is a farmer in the area. My name is Joseph Kones. I was born uh, 57 years ago in Kaparusa, village in Kempo location of Bamet district. I've lived here for about 40 years because I was born about five kilometers down this way but I shifted here about 30, 30, 35 years ago. A keen conservationist, Joseph has for the last three decades noticed changes in his environment. A phenomenon totally alien to the locals, climate change. When I was young, um, we used to have regular rains, especially in the months of April, April and November. But during this time, it's difficult because it rains any time of the year. Even the planning for, for planting has been very difficult for the farmers. So there must be something wrong somewhere. As the habitats have kept changing, the flora and fauna have been forced to change with the times or face imminent extinction. For agro-practices of local communities in the Mara Basin, this has amounted to the guessing game, as the climate patterns have become unpredictable. Say about 20 years ago, the rains used to come in November uh, and, and April. But now, in the last 20 years, is when, uh, when, when we saw these changes, especially myself, because uh, we are no longer planting in the months that we used to plant. Like this year, the rains came in, in January, February, and it was too late for the farmers to grow. So when they, when they started growing, then the crops, now the area is waterlocked, and, and, and I don't think they are going to have any, any harvest at all. Predictable rainfall pattern and amount are key factors for the improvement of the locals' livelihood. Farmers would prepare the land, select the best seed and fertilizer as they wait for the much anticipated rains. Over the last few years, that has not been the case. Climate change has forced the farmer to adapt to the erratic weather patterns. The, the food production around here has gone down because, because people are not aware of when to plant. And even if they plant it, they might not get rain during that time. Farming here has been, has been treated as business. And uh, with this kind of production that we are now getting very low production, we found that um, it has affected the, not only me, but almost everywhere. Over the years now, we have, we have started receiving uh, food donation. And we, we've never, we used to hear that uh, donation was being given to other areas, but not, not, not around here. Effects of global climate change are being experienced locally and the Mara River Basin, as well as its environs, has not been spared either. Serious threats include spells of drought, changes in rainfall patterns, altered seasons, violent storms and flash floods. Joseph has witnessed all of these symptoms of change. The last two years we experienced uh, a dry spell. And during this, since I was born here, and we are talking about over 50 years ago, We've never experienced such a drought because the main river, which you can see down this, which is a distributor of the Mara River, dried up for the first time since I was born. It just never dried. Last year, we had heavy rains 
in the months that we used ne never to have any rains. And during that time, we experienced uh, a lot of destruction that was never seen before. We had all these rivers flooded and so forth, and the lower side was flooded. Completely, and the crops were completely destroyed. And uh, it just never happened before because it has been very difficult because now the rain patterns have changed. In addition to unpredictable weather patterns, climate change has played host to a number of other alien challenges to the communities around. 20 years ago, around, say, in, in the 80s, uh, January, February used to be warmer. But now, with the change of rains uh, or climate, uh, we are now experiencing cold January, February or so because of the change in, you know, in the rain patterns. The climate change has also made it conducive for the emergence and proliferation of diseases in the area. When I was young, we never knew anything about malaria, actually. Uh, uh, it was very rare for people to, to catch malaria. But um, we don't know how the, how the mosquitoes developed around here, this area because it never used to be. I think it must, have been, it, it must be warmer for them now because we used to hear that the malaria was around the lake, the lake area before. There are means of keeping climate change under control. A global clean energy revolution, coupled with environmental conservation, will help a great deal to keep our climate stable and in check. The way forward to this increasing temperature trend is simply to cut down the emission, especially by the industrialized countries. The other solution is to plant as many trees as possible. Because you know vegetation is the sink to carbon dioxide. So if we clear down the forest, it means that carbon dioxide which is released or by our industrial uh, nations will just accumulate in air. And when it accumulates, it actually leads to increase in temperature. We can limit the damages from climate change if we act now.